Hello, Josie. Oh, hi. Um, my name is Christine. I got your number from the Kingdom Hall. Oh, okay. Oh, that was nice of them to give a phone number. Yeah, how are you today? Good, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Well, uh, I just have a quick question, if you have a minute. Sure. Well, um, I admit I've read a lot of um, Jehovah's Witness stuff over the years, and um, it's just a question I have. Um, I don't know if they changed this or if I'm just confused, but it seems like one of the initial views of Russell that was most important to him was that everybody, pretty much everybody would be resurrected to get a, like, it's like a great reset. Adam died for, you know, I mean, Jesus died for Adam and then he replaces him and then everybody could be resurrected and, um, be raised to perfection in better conditions. Is that, is that correct? Well, we recognize that there'll be a resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous. So. Yeah, I was asking about his initial view. Yeah. But now, when I read the literature now, it seems like um, only Jehovah's Witnesses will survive Armageddon. Well, obviously, we're not the ones to say who's going to survive Armageddon. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm asked not you in particular, <laughs> but the literature does say that. Uh, so we do highlight that there are certain... Uh, certain biblical requirements uh, that God is looking for, obviously, and that enhances our survival. We, we can't say who's going to survive and who isn't. Uh, but I'm asking about what the, the statements in the literature to that effect. I'm, you know, maybe you don't believe that, but this is just one example. It says, only Jehovah's Witnesses, those of the anointed remnant and the great crowd, as a united organization, have any scriptural hope of surviving the impending end of this doomed system dominated by Satan the devil? And where, where are you pointing from, ma'am? Um, the Watchtower, 1989, September 1st. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't know that we've, we've put that in print lately. However... Oh, you mean um, they were teaching the wrong thing at that time? Is that what you're saying? It's not really, it was incorrect in, in the Watchtower? I, I think that, that the tenor uh, uh, at that time uh, em emphasizes the importance of, of um, biblical knowledge to help us. But as, I, as, as we've always pointed out, we're not the ones in charge of who gets resurrected. Why, why did they the say that then? Sorry? Well, well, this is very clear. <clears throat> I'm, I guess my question is, will anybody who's not a Jehovah's Witness survive Armageddon? Oh, well, we, we, we can't be dogmatic about that. So, was this just kidding or what? I mean, it's very dogmatic. It says, only Jehovah's Witnesses have any hope of surviving the end of this doomed system dominated by Satan the devil. Well, I'd have to take a look at yeah. I'd have to take that. Uh, and I'm sure that, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, what, we, what we have said lately is that there are certain things that Jesus highlights for our salvation. And I, I think those are enumerated. I, th I think that, that a lot of people today... Um, have uh, have uh, been taught things that are really not scriptural. So we're trying to stick with the Bible. But so in, does that in, mean that statement I read is not scriptural? Because you're you you're kind of implying that they changed it since then. Well, I I, I once more I'd have, I'd have to take a look oh, at okay. this. Okay. I, I'd have to take a look at what you you've just quoted in yeah. context. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Uh, yeah. There's another one, too. Um, I'll just give you this other one, since you're going to be looking for it. Um, it's 1983, February 15th, page 12, and it says, To receive everlasting life in the earthly paradise, we must identify Jehovah's organization, or it, it, this says that organization, based on what it just said, and serve God as part of it. So this is the Watchtower, 1983, page 12, what? Yeah, February 15th. 
page 12. It's very similar to the other one, I think. Okay, well, um, it's just confusing because, um, you know, it seems different than what they taught in their early history as well. And, um, you know, he said of what he taught was from Jehovah and stuff like that. He considered, they, they have this other book that says he was the seventh and last messenger of the church. Well, of course, we, we're not, uh, obviously, uh, the truth, uh, you know, the truth gets brighter and brighter. So, it, right wait a minute, one. what, what? Are, are you saying they used to teach false things? Uh, we are not, uh, the Watchtower is not inspired like the Bible. So I would say that as time goes on, that we've made, we've made adjustments in our thinking. Or I think that that is rather normal. Do you think, uh, that, well, you know what? Why do they call themselves the only channel of truth? And then say what um, they teach and the direction is from Jehovah. I mean, is it possible to... I, I don't. I don't think we. I don't think we should categorize ourselves as inspired prophets. Yeah. That's that's not what we've ever done. Yeah, they certainly have said they call themselves prophets. Yeah, it, you know, historically, yes, they actually have used that word. Now they're they just use synonyms um, instead of that. Like they used to say, they're the John class or the Ezekiel class or um, the Watchtower is written by no man. Well, what does that mean then? It, who is it? Who is it written by? Right? I mean, Jehovah is the editor of the Watchtower. They've said. I mean, and they still use those expressions. Do you think it's possible to use similar expressions that mean the same thing without using the word inspired? Uh, I, 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 I mean, I think, think about it. Maybe I, th I think maybe you're 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 combing our material, trying to prove something, when in actuality we're. We're not infallible, and we never have, we've never promised anybody infallibility. The Bible is infallible, of course, but it's uh, our obviously uh, our teachings. We we continue to learn and to improve, and I, I wouldn't say that uh, the Watchtower is ever uh, you know of late anyway. Probably the last uh, de mm -hmm. few decades has never in claim never uh, claim that, uh, that what they're saying is uh, inspired prophecy. That, it's that from, is it's, what does it mean that it's from Jehovah? Well, I, I think that I think Jehovah's Witnesses are doing their best to uh, share a Bible truth with. No, People I think if you're interpret if you're if you're considering yourself on the level of like what the governing body claims they are, that doesn't really fly with people. You, you, you know, they want to be just an ordinary Joe if you're examining the history. <laughs> but for, for now, the level of obedience that they exact upon people and their claims um, is nothing like being an ordinary Joe who just wants to learn from the Bible. They control eight, over 8 million people. If they, whatever they change their mind, those 8 million people will change their mind the next day. I, I've observed it enough to actually see it happen when they changed the definition of who is the faithful and discreet slave and they made <laughs> the overlapping generation and things like that. Suddenly all witnesses believe in those things when they didn't yesterday, you know. So, um, you know, if you want, I could send you, there's actually a really interesting list of all their inspiration claims, just with using other wording. If you ever want to see them, it's, it's pretty startling when you really see it. Uh, I, 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 I can see where you're going, and I appreciate that you have a particular view that I don't, I don't uh, follow at all. Uh, and I, I do appreciate the, the fact that you, you're, you have a right to your opinion, but uh, I've never, I've been one of Jehovah's Witnesses most of my life, and I've never believed that the Watchtower is inspired, and I've never been taught that. They use, so, they use uh, equivalent expressions. It's a type of um, slyness, you know, so they can, they can deny it, but yet they can still keep their same level of authority. And um, I, I, I can I, give you a whole I, list of everything that they've said to that effect. 
and, you know, and it's just words from the watchtower which which you tell people to go read so you know i think it would be worth looking at so that you can see that they do claim that uh, i think you're grossly mistaken about a number of issues and i've, I've explained to you uh, you know as best i can uh that you you may have an opinion that uh, it's very foreign to me very very foreign to me mm. would you like so, to would, well why don't you want to look at the list of things then you know they they go around telling everybody examine your religion you know it's I, just watchtower quotes it's nothing more it's nothing more than watchtower quotes man uh, ma'am I, I think we need to end our conversation but you have a great day okay okay god bless you thank you Oh, hi. Um, I got your number from the Kingdom Hall, and um, I just had a quick question I was wondering if someone could help me with. You can. Do you have a minute? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'm in this Bible discussion group, so we talk about a lot of different things, but there's kind of some question about um, what do you guys think about Armageddon? Like, is it only Jehovah's Witnesses who will survive Armageddon? Well, actually, there's a scripture in the book of Joel that talks about the last, the third chapter, right at the end of that chapter. Let me, let me take a look at that. And it tells us that there's going to be survivors. Basically, we believe that anybody that has got a good relationship with God, and they're trying to do what God wants them to do, these are going to be survivors. They don't want to do what God wants to do. <laughs> you do, right? So, look at Joel. Let's we'll see a Joel. Third chapter. It says right at the end of that chapter. Take that back. Second chapter. Look at verse 32. It must occur that everyone who calls on the name of Jehovah will get away safe. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem, they will prove to be the escaped ones, just as Jehovah has said, and in among the survivors whom Jehovah has called. And I have that from our New World Translation, plus I have the, the BHS, you know what that is, Biblical Hebraic Stuttgartensia, which has God's name in there, I think, uh, over 6,800. Anyway, so it says there's going to be survivors, right? Right. Anybody? So, um, are those only Jehovah's Witnesses? Are you saying other people, like in Hebrews root, Hebrew Roots Movement groups, that um, they they say Jehovah a lot? I don't think they believe it's in the New Testament, though. What's that? Um, Jehovah? Yeah, the Tetragrammaton. Actually, the reason why it isn't is that there's a lot of translations, not just ours, that have Jehovah in the New World Translation, I mean in the New Testament, and they have some proof that there's, that it was there in, in the Set Septuagint, but of course that's Hebrew scriptures. Right. They, there... do quote, they do quote from the Hebrew, Right. and then it's got Noah's name in it, and they take it out. Well, the thing is, is that all the Greek manuscripts existing today, and some go really way back now, uh, don't yeah, have right. it. Do not have it. That's uh, that's true. The fourth yeah. century don't. The or what? The but when they quote from the the Hebrew. Do you think that they would deliberately take it out if they were Bible? Well, the word no. the word curios was the uh, word the Septuagint used for the Tetragrammaton, and actually, yes, and that's one of the proofs for the deity of Christ is that many scriptures from the Old Testament um, are then attributed to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is really interesting. But that's totally, uh, you know, removed in the New no, World Translation. So. Um, but anyway, that's a different question. I sorry, I was I kind of got off on that um, because you know it says here in this watchtower um, that I'm looking at um, it says only Jehovah's Witnesses, those of the anointed remnant and the great crowd, as a united organization under the protection of the supreme organizer, <laughs> have any scriptural hope of surviving the impending end of this doomed system dominated by Satan. 
Okay, what date is that, by the way? 1989, September 1st, page 19. Because okay. uh, lately we've been realizing that these ones that are going to be going to the heavens, the anointed ones, uh, they're not going to survive on the dead. They're going to be gone before it, actually. So that's, that's a kind of a new... Oh, well, I wasn't concerned about that. I was concerned that this contradicted what you, your answer. This says only Jehovah's Witnesses will survive Armageddon. It calls well, it the exactly. impending end, too, which is interesting in 1989. But anyway, they always said that. Yep. Even in the oh. 1870s, they said it's, you know, any minute and all that. Um, so anyway, yeah, oh, you're, you're, you didn't say that clearly. Oh, I mean, okay. is this correct or is what you said correct now? Do they change it? You know, basically, it's correct. <laughs> we feel, though, that who's actually doing God's will? Who's telling the good news of the kingdom? Okay, so you, you do agree with this? this Because that's not what you answered when I when I asked you. You you kind of obscu well, there's obscured that. I showed, I, I showed you that scripture in Joel. And we don't know all the ramifications of that yet. Well, this, this uh, quote is very plain. Did they? Is this in beliefs clarified? Do they? Do they expand who the survivors are now, or is it still? They still believe this. I'm just. We're just trying to. That's why we're trying to get clarity on it, because some Jehovah's Witnesses okay. say well, different basically things. Basically, we still believe that because okay. think about this: who uh, who is actually telling the good news of the kingdom all over the world? In over a thousand languages. Well, who has made false prophecies all over the world in a million languages? Um, you know, Jesus warned against false prophets. True. Yeah. So I, I everybody thinks no. of the Watchtower when they when they think about that question. I don't I don't know any any more apocalyptic false dates. You know, group. So you know that would be my way of looking at it, right? <laughs> well, we we might differ there. I yeah. <laughs> Okay. You got uh, everybody yeah. has their own opinion. You don't you don't really take much thought about Jesus warning about false prophets and Deuteronomy well, yes, eighteen. Yeah. Deuteronomy eighteen says people that say things uh were from Jehovah and then don't come to pass. It says don't don't follow them, don't fear them, right? Did you ever read right. that passage? Oh yeah, that that's a favorite scripture of mine. Actually. Yeah, they've done that many times. In the name of Jehovah calling themselves Ezekiel class, Jeremiah class, calling themselves a prophet, only channel. What we teach is from Jehovah, right? Well, that's what we feel, that everything we teach is from yeah. the Bible. I know they say from Jehovah. The interpretations are from Jehovah. They said all their dates that they gave, starting with Russell, were from Jehovah. He, they, they said he was the, actually they said he was the, um, last and final messenger of the church. They said that in one of their books. No, we didn't say that. There was a group that started worshiping Pastor Russell. Really? Supposedly. Wow. And yeah, I've, I've been to his grave site, and they've even got a little, little what they call it. Let's see, what is that over in Egypt? Uh, uh, oh, the pyramid. pyramid. No, that says watch. Yeah, That's... they got a pyramid like that. And <laughs> we don't don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. It was just removed, so that's, everybody's also wondering who removed it. I don't know. Yeah, unless, I think it does it say... The land, unless it was on the land that Russell owned. Well, the... I, I, I can't tell you that. I don't know. I don't think it, the pyramid but, said Bible students. I think it says Watchtower Bible and Tract Society on it, which is really interesting. Um, you I know... Don't know. What? Well, I don't remember that. I don't because I was there at Pennsylvania. There. Oh, did you did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was back when was that? Back in the mid seventies when I, I was there. Well, yeah, I mean, it makes sense to have that on Russell's grave because he was so into pyramidology. You know, he he used these numbers of measuring the pyramid to get his dates. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. The pyramid, basically, we, we found out late after that. Uh -huh. I don't know if Russell knew it then, but we found out after that that those pyramids of Egypt were where they worshipped the stars. I mean, of course. that little angle they got to go right, right to Draco, in Thuban in Draco. Yeah, so your, your religion has pagan origins, I guess. 
well, we've gotten rid of things that are wrong. Hmm, interesting. That's even, that's the way it should be. Yeah, but in interesting. In Deuteronomy 18, for example, in verses 9 and 10 and 11 and 12, it, are you ready? Okay, i got to go. But uh, it talks about the disgusting things that we absolutely have nothing to do with. Divination, magic, omens, sorcery, binding others with a spell. I guess that's hypnotism, what do you think? Or anyone who consults a spirit medium or professional foreteller of events or anyone inquires of the dead. Because these are things detestable to Jehovah. And he's going to drive them out. So they have to face that stuff. Well, let, we use all scripture, right? So you, you should probably pay attention to the last couple of verses in that chapter instead of keep I making... I will look at that, by okay. the way. But okay. I have to go, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, I heard you. Okay, have a great day. God bless you. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.